Teresa and today I am bringing to you tutorial number two in my Photoshop series and so part of my memory keeping plans for this year are to use Photoshop more and Photoshop templates more in my project life layouts and so I wanted to share with you some of my tutorials that contain just basic tips and ways that I use Photoshop specifically for Project Life, um, including photo editing, uh, working with templates, resizing photos, and different things like that. Um, and you are welcome to submit questions and topics that you would like to hear about. And so feel free to comment below or leave me a message or a uh, connect with me on Instagram or through my blog and I will be happy to address the concerns that you have or the challenges that you have in using Photoshop specifically for memory keeping. I know that Photoshop can be overwhelming and sometimes we feel like we need to know everything about a software before we feel like we should use it and I want to dispel that a little bit and just hone in on how Photoshop is helpful especially for Project Life, um, so that you can gain, hopefully will gain some specific tools that will help you streamline your Project Life process just a little bit. So today I had a question from a viewer about resizing photos and photo quality. And so I wanted to just go over a little of that with you. and. First, I wanted to give you just a tiny caveat and say that image quality and image size are really important and it helps to educate yourself and to know what you can do in Photoshop and what you can do with your images. And so I encourage you to educate yourself, but I also encourage you to embrace the imperfect photos as well. Um, I have to tell you that for a long time I thought that I shouldn't share my layouts, my scrapbook layouts online because I didn't think that my photography was good enough or I didn't think that I had the, the best equipment, the best camera. And my advice to you is to use what you have. If all you have is a point and shoot, use it and enjoy it. Um, if all you have is your camera that's on your phone, use it and enjoy it and embrace the photos that you do have. And this is helpful particularly if you're working with photos that have that were taken years ago, um, heritage photos and photos that were taken before the digital age, <laughs> digital transformation, right? Those are that's, that's what you have, and so embrace those photos, whether they're perfect or imperfect. I would encourage you to learn as much as you can about focus. And obviously, these are photography tips that I'm not really going to get into. I'm not a professional photographer by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I just play around, and I do have to admit that. My recent photography has been completely changed by purchasing my Canon 7D. So if you're looking to upgrade your photography and get better quality images, I do highly recommend having a good DSLR and learning how to use it. Whether you learn how to use it on manual or AV, doesn't matter. Learn how to learn the best that you can to focus have good focused images and then the rest you can work with in Photoshop. If it's dark you can work with that in Photoshop. If it needs to be cropped differently you can work with that in Photoshop and a lot of that you can do on your phone as well. So learn the focus capabilities of your camera or your phone and your camera that you're using from your phone. Learn that capability first and the rest will work on in Photoshop. So today I'm going to open up my Photoshop home screen here and we're going to dive right in. We're going to work on images 
image sizing, what that means or what I know about what that means, how I size my photos, and we're going to talk just a little bit about quality of images. And this is not in any way, shape, or form designed to be a complete compendium of uh, everything that you can know about image sizing because I don't know everything that there is to know and I don't know a lot of the technical information. I can only share with you what works for me and I will tell you this that while this is chugging sometimes I don't get it right either and sometimes I print photos and I put them on my layout even though they're blurry even though they're dark, even though they're grainy, I put them in the layouts anyway because the photos have more meaning to me than just simply, oh, look at this great photographic statement <laughs> that I took today. Um, yeah, my, my photographs are not all perfect and they're not all, you know, these beautiful images. That's not really a reflection of my life and that's not really a reflection of me and who I am. I'm not a perfect photographer. I'm not a studio photographer and I'm not going to pretend to be. I just want to include the photos that have meaning to me, whether they're perfectly perfect or not. And other people will certainly have opinions about my photographs and will certainly tell me right? That photo doesn't look right. <laughs> or look how awesome that photo is. Um, and that's wonderful, right? I think that we can encourage each other and we can definitely stretch ourselves because the more you study and research, the more you grab your camera and work with it. And the more that you practice photography, the better it gets. And that means that you have to embrace where you are right now. Embrace where you are right now because today your photography is probably a whole lot better than it was a year ago or two years ago or five years ago. And in, in another year or two or three, your photography will come further as well, both between practice and new technology. So embrace that we're all in a process somewhere. And I can tell you that it's easy to look at someone like Wilna Forstenberg, right, who takes gorgeous photos. And I love her work. And I, I'm so inspired by her photography. And sometimes I think, man, I wish I could take pictures like Wilna Forstenberg, right? And then I have to stop myself and I have to say, wait a second. Wilna Furstenberg takes photos like Wilna because she is Wilna. And Wilna Furstenberg probably looks at another photographer and goes, man, I wish I could take photos like that person. And in the end, Wilna takes, Wilna takes photos like Wilna takes photos because she's Wilna. And I take photos like I take photos because I am me. And you take photos in the way that you take photos because you're you. And so every one of us will take, we can all have the same camera and the same shoot, the same scenery and image, and all of every single one of us would come up with different results because photography is an art, just like watercolor, just like oil paints, just like scrapbooking paper. We all are going to come, with, come to, to the, to the, we're all going to come here with different results because that's who we are and how we use that equipment. So all I can do with you is all I can do is share with you how I use the equipment of Photoshop to help me manage my images and get better quality images because I think that it is possible to take the photos that we're taking, right? And bump them up just a little bit and make them pop just a little bit so that they are better and um, first you have to start with a good focused photo. Um, so I'm going to go here into the photos that I took that I've been taking this year and share with you what some of those look like. The combination of photos that I have um, just over the last few weeks and what those image sizes and quality look like. 
So I'm going to go here into my photos. And I went over this a little bit last time about how I store my photos. I have them by year and then by month. And when you go into the month folder, then you will find the weeks. And so you'll see this is January. And I have cleaned this up a little bit. There's some some layouts here that I still need to um, make sure that they're in their appropriate folders before I delete, delete those. But most of the weeks of January are now cleaned up, and so every one of them has a couple of a couple of photos that have been taken. Some of them have been taken with my camera phone. Some of them have been edited on my phone. And, um, and then I have others that were taken with my DSLR. Let's see. Um, these were taken with my DSLR, but they have been edited. Um, those were some headshots that I was playing around with. Um, let's see if there's another set of DSLR photos. I haven't used that camera very much. Um, there really aren't. There really aren't any other photos. Let's see. What about in this one? Because mostly, mostly I am using my phone camera these days. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the purposes of this tutorial is I want to open up a couple of phone photos and then I'll go and I'll open up some images from my um, DSLR to compare the image sizes. And if you hover over any of these images, it will show you the dimensions. And these dimensions, for example, this photo measures 1280 by 960. Those are the pixels per inch, so PPI. And that tells you that that's a pretty decent photo size. Um, that's unedited. Let's see. This is probably a good one to pull up. And then you can see here that I've edited this image, the same image, in on my phone. And so it's slightly a different, it's a slightly different size now through whatever app that I used. And so some apps will resize your photos. Um, so you got to pay attention to that a little bit. So let's open those right now. Okay, and so here's the original, right? And the edited version. So this image here, let's find the properties of this image. So we can go into image size and if you click on that it will tell you it's 1280 by 960 and the resolution is 72 pixels per inch. Um, now the 1280 by 960 that's a fairly decent sized photo. The resolution of 72 is probably not the greatest. So if you try to print this out at a resolution of 72 it's probably going to be a little bit grainy. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, it won't print out bad because you have, what you have is like 18 inches by 13 inches. And you're probably going to print it, if you're going to print it on a 4x6 sheet or a, photo, a 4x6 photo paper, it will bring the pixel sizes back up to normal and so the photo will look pretty decent. If you're going to print this enlarged, it probably it might have some grain to it. Now, what I do sometimes if I'm just using a photo straight off my phone, right? I'm probably going to make a couple of edits because it's a little dark, and you can use your color curves, right, and brighten that up a little bit. Bring down, bring the contrast back in a little bit. Um, there we go and then flatten our layers and let's say we want to brighten want to brighten this area a little bit on his shirt so we're just going to take the dodge tool that's pretty big 
make it a little bit smaller. Let's put it at like, yeah, 500 is good. We're going to brighten his face. His, his glasses darken in the sun, so a lot of times I go back and, and brighten just his eyes a little bit, just so they don't look like dark holes. Um, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. And you can see when you zoom in, you get some of the pixelated look here, right? Um, and that's because it's 72, a resolution of 72 pixels. Um, there we go. Just a little, little tiny bit. You don't want to do too much because then it'll look weird. And then zoom back out, and that's pretty decent. Now, if I'm going to print this just like this on a 4x6 photo, right, it's going to have to be cropped a little bit because the aspect ratio on your camera phone is different from 4 by 6. It's like 4.5 by, by 6 or something like that. That's why when you send photos from your phone to, <laughs> to an outside printer, they're going to crop a little bit off. And you can do that. You can crop it yourself in Photoshop when you click on this little rectangle tool right here. It's going to bring up this box, and this is, this is my, it has saved in it the last cropping measurements that I use. So if you use 4x6 a lot, it's going to bring up 4x6 for you automatically, but I did not use 4x6 last time. So I'm going to go up here, this taskbar up here tells me everything that the crop tool is able to do. And there's a couple of things that it's able to do. Um, this gives you some presets, some crop presets. You've got 4x6 at 300 ppi, which actually happens to be what we're going to do. But I'm going to show you how to do it manually as well. Um, so just click away from that. We have the option to change it this way. You can keep the ratio the same. Or you can do a 1 to 1 aspect ratio. 2 to 3, 16 to 9, and then other, other options for your pixel size and your PPI. Okay, um, now when, when we talk about aspect ratio, you will see in some of your photo editing apps like um, Letter Glow, when you open a new canvas, it will ask you what aspect ratio do you want. Do you want a 1 to 1, which is square? Do you want a 2 to 3 aspect ratio or a 3 to 4 aspect ratio? Those are pretty common that we use in the scrapbooking industry because 1 to 1 is going to let you print 12 by 12. Your 2 to 3 is going to let you print 4 by 6. And your 3 to 4 is going to let you print 3 inches by 4 inches or 6 by 8 inches as far as physical size. Um, this is not the actual size, that's just the aspect ratio, which means that if you click on 2 to 3, then your, um, your height, I'm sorry, your width is going to be 2 in comparison to your height, which will be 3. Um, I don't know if any I don't know if I'm making any sense with any of that at all. But we're going to just leave it at width by height by resolution. And I'm going to type in here. This gives you inches. Now you can type in pixel here if you know that you want 1800 by 1200 um, pixels. You can do that. I prefer I think better in inches because I'm probably intending to print here. Now, if you're doing, if you're working for web, it's a little bit different, but I, my intention here is to print. So I'm thinking in terms of how many inches I need this image to be, right? Or how big do I need it to be for my um, project life layout or for my template? So I get six inches and then let's go and make this four inches. And you can see that the box has changed. The box here has cut off a little bit from the top and a little bit from the bottom. And if we click here, 
we can move that and adjust it a little bit where we want it, right? It probably don't want to cut off tops of heads. Um, this grid helps you see, you've heard of the rule of thirds. This grid helps you see the rule of thirds, right? And so what you want is the focal point of the image to hit at one of these intersections when you're cropping. Um, so if you have a photo of a flower pot, you might want your, and that's what your, your, the emphasis of your photo is, you might want your flower pot to hit at one of these intersections or close by, right? Anywhere nearby these. So this photo has two kind of focal points, right? Both of our eyes. Um, so you want to draw attention to both of our eyes and obviously our eyes are not on the same line and so we're going to split the difference right we can split the difference here and we're still going to have we're going to make sure we're not cutting off his head and we're still going to have a pretty pleasing thing now notice here you can of course drag the corners let's say that Let's say that the story that you're wanting to tell about this photo is primarily about Alan. Then you might want to focus directly on him. I mean, you could. But it's, it's a good image um, with splitting the difference there. So I'm going to just put that back. I try to maintain as much of the original image as I can. Um, just for me because I've already set up when I took the photograph I already set this up so that it would be pretty close to what I wanted um, and obviously sometimes when you're taking selfies like you don't quite get what you wanted <laughs> um, and this was take this is a selfie right we set the the camera on the hood of the car and leaned in um, so pretty easy, pretty fun. Now notice here that this is our block here for pixels per inch. And originally this photo was 72. And we're going to bump it up to 300. Now what that will do sometimes is make your image a whole lot larger. So when you click the OK button right here, it might take it a minute and it's going to jump it up because it just made that image a little bit bigger um, but what that's going to do then is give you more pixels per inch when you go to print it in your software. I'm going to um, zoom that back out a little bit and so then um, that is ready for printing. That photograph is ready for printing. Now you can if you're going to do this with say a hundred photos in the Photoshop CC version you can create actions to automate that so that you do it once on one photo and then it will do it for you for a hundred. Um, I don't think that I'm going to get into actions today. There are other other people who have done tutorials so if you're if you're needing to learn how to do that the actions button is here, this little arrow, and then this is the screen that gives you options to create new actions. And it's basically just a system of recording. Everything that I just did to that photo, I can record that as an action and then tell it to do that across a whole set of photos or images. This is how professional photographers edit a lot of images really quickly um, by using actions. So that's another tutorial for another time. For today I really just wanted to focus on image sizing and how to get a good print quality photo. Now that being said, this image still is probably not going to print perfectly because you can see there's a little bit of haze in there. Um, we can go in and sharpen that a little bit in our filter menu and we go to sharpen. Now, there's a couple of options here and the best one is the last one which is called an unsharp mask. And that's going to pull up this little window right here. If we zoom out a little bit, we can sort of 
preview what it's going to do. Now, you can sharpen this all the way up so that it's really granular again, right? And we don't really want that. We don't really want that granular look. We want a soft appearance to the skin. Um, your radius, that's how, <laughs> that's what that does, right? So we keep that pretty low. Um, two or less is usually where I keep that in the threshold. If we bump that up, um, I don't really, I haven't really played around much with the threshold. I usually keep that pretty low too, to about 15, and click OK. Now it does give you the little preview in here. You can turn the preview off, but anyway, and then that will just sharpen it just a little bit. Um, it's really, actually, you should probably, I don't know. That was a really light sharpen, right? Um, so the other, another way, if you really want it to be obvious where you're sharpening, is to use this this um, sharpen tool here. Usually, it looks like a teardrop, and it's that's the default. But when it's on sharpen, it's a triangle, and it brings up another little brush here, and you can go in. And you can click specifically on places that you think are sort of fuzzy. Um, my face is a little bit fuzzy on this photo. I was probably still, I was probably moving or laughing, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so, but, but really, I'm not going to really worry about it. It's probably going to print just fine, right? Um, and again, embrace the photo that you have because that is a moment in time that was captured of us together. Now I'm going to move over here to the image that I edited in on my phone. And now what I probably did with this image is I probably brought it into a color story and used the curves to brighten it. And then I saved it and then brought it into Pick Stitch to add the white border. Now, your mileage may vary with white borders. And, and obviously, I would probably still go in and lighten his eyes, his glasses, just a little bit. Um, just to, just a, a little bit. You don't want to do a lot. Just to so that he doesn't look like he has black eyes or a mask or something, just to see a little better, right? Um, now, regarding the white border, this is something that I do a lot. I add my borders in Pick Stitch. Um, I'm really liking this look right now on my Project Life layouts. I really like borders on photos on traditional layouts because it makes them pop just a little bit and is a graphic clean look to your edges. Your mileage may vary on this because um, when I go to hit print, um, if, you, if I print this image in, on my Canon without borders, it's going to make that border wonky. Um, I don't know if it will show that or not. I haven't clicked on borderless. Um, let's see. Let's just see what it looks like. Let it chug for a minute. Um, and it's telling it to print it at full size right here. So we're going to pull that back. And so you notice when I hit the scale to fit media, the print resolution bumped bumped it back up to 322 ppi. And again, this is the image that my phone created. So you can see the difference that when you're going to print it at 100%, it's going to try to print it at 19 by <laughs> 18 by 27 or whatever, which is not the size that we want. So we're going to scale it back so that it fits into this. Now it shows that it's okay. Um, 
I, I'll be honest, the cannon that I have is so new that I haven't really played with the borders yet. Um, so that might be, that might work out just fine. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I've done this yet. I've printed these on my Project Life layouts, but I don't think that I've printed four by six photos with a, with a preset border. Um, I'm going to cancel out that and go back to this one that does not have the borders and let's see what the print screen looks like for that one um, so I'm going to hit print again and let's see if it's still in yep it's still in four by six I just want to see borderless let's click the borders and make sure that the preview before printing is clicked just so that we can see what it looks like now it's it's cutting it off right so let's make that hello there we go and then you can see here that it shows you the 4x6 is set and the print resolution is 300 ppi just like we told the image so this is really where you want to pay attention to what your PPI is because that's going to tell you whether it's granulated or not and will let you then if, if it's not looking right then you can cancel and go back in and, and try and fix it a little bit. Um, this is where to pay attention to that if you, if you aren't sure. And so that will give you, now for some reason I have because like I said, this cannon is still kind of new to me, so I haven't figured out yet. You can see that there's more of a white border here than there is right here, and I'm not sure why that's happening yet. I haven't... Let's see if we center it. It just centers the image inside that frame. Um, I'm not sure what that's really all about either. <laughs> yeah. There's all these variables, right? This is why sometimes the photos don't really come out perfect. And I, I have a rule. I print it out once and then I work with it, right? So if I were to print this out and it's not completely perfect or whatever, then just cut it to 4x4 four four and put it on a 4x6 journal card and move on, right? Um, commit yourself to working with the images that you have in front of you. Otherwise, you could stay here all day. You could stay here all day and edit one photo, right? Like, we've been talking about this, <laughs> this one photo for, like, 15 minutes now. You can edit. You can spend all of your hours all day long editing and printing photos. And you guys just don't do it, right? Just, just say, okay, well, that's how it printed, so I'm going to work with it. And that's okay. Th these images don't have to be perfect and remove that expectation from yourself that all of your images have to be perfect right now i'm going to bring in a photo from that was taken on my dslr just as a um comparison regarding size and what that looks like um here we go we've got some dslr photos here um, yeah, so this is cute. And you can see, right, it's got, it's got a few image, a few image issues. It's a little bit blurry in some places. She was probably moving her body in some way. And it's dark and kind of yellow, right? So, simple adjustments for that, first off, always start with your curves. That will do a lot more than you can imagine, or that more than you might imagine, um, just to bump up your curves a little bit, okay? And flatten that. Now, I hear a lot, and I struggle a lot with images that have sort of a yellow cast, and there's like a couple of ways there's a couple of ways that you can deal with that and I usually have to just play around with it but the best way that I have found is to go into hue saturation and bump up the blues 
a little bit. Maybe not that much, right? Because that's going to turn it green. But bump that up just a little bit and drop the saturation a little bit. Um, you can also, and that tends to gray it out, right? Maybe just a little bit of lightness there. Okay, that's one thing you can do. And then we're going to go back here into levels. Now levels are something I use quite a bit actually to help with contrast because we've lost a little bit of contrast when we did that. And so you can see how that adds some, it adds some of that yellow back in but if we do just a little bit of it just at 10 or so and then lighten the these two will lighten that again and again not much right you don't have to do much to this put that one on 240 and it's looking a little bit better it's it's not a perfect image I don't know if I would actually use this image or not, I would probably go and look at um, the other three. There's an interesting thing, you know, this is why they tell you don't take, don't take just one photo, take two or three, because by the time you put your finger on the shutter, you're moving the camera, so the first one is going to be a little blurry. Um, yeah, that one's a little bit sharper. Okay, well then let's start over. So that's a good that's a good lesson on why, why should I take more than one photo of the same shot. And that's one of the reasons why if you're, when you first put your finger on the shutter button, you're, you're going to be um, shaking a little bit. So the second or third image will get more of the, um, will actually, that, that motion in your own arm will, sh will calm down a little bit. Um, let's see, we had done hue saturation, and, you know, just, there's some other, like, options here. I've just played around with the default. You can also choose whether you want a specific colorway. I don't know the, I don't know the technical term, but if you just want to work with the reds or the yellows here, um, you can do that. I think that, let's see, if we bump up the blues a little bit, see, notice how we don't quite get the green that we got with the overall. And really, I'll be honest with you, I just play around with these and see, oh, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do this? Because you can't possibly know everything just know where it is, and then you can play around with it. So I don't really know that the blues are really helping us. I'm going to just keep it on master and do what we did to the other one. I don't really like that. Oh, hello, pink. <laughs> yeah, let's hit undo. And start over. Go back here. I'm... That makes, uh, um, any of these adjustments make their own layer. So if you aren't happy with what you did there, you can just press delete on your keyboard. And that layer will go away and that adjustment will go away. Um, it happens sometimes. Let's see, color balance is always an option as well for working with these things. Um... Hello, Martian. And sometimes it's just fun to play around and see what happens. This is actually it's somewhere in the 15 range. It's probably pretty decent. And let's flatten that. Um, and I would probably still go into the levels. And I'm going to just manually enter these. These are numbers that I use quite frequently. 10, 1.2, and 245. Um, and you can see what happens if you just do 24. It blows it out. 
um, the 245 is, will brighten that up and that way this image now becomes something that you could you could work with and you need to flatten it again and if you still wanted to do a little tiny bit more brightening go back to our dodge tool and 500 is usually well we could do a thousand here a thousand for that size brush and because her arms are still so there's just some shadows there right I just this brush tool is great where there's some darker shadows and then we've got a nice creamy bokeh here but I'm gonna brighten that again a little bit just so that it's a little, a little more milky and a little more soft here and then one last little sharpen here on her bottle of shells um, let it chug 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 for a minute and so back to image size here. Now this image from my DSLR is 38 inches by 24 and a half, 25 inches. Let's see what this says. It's 2700 pixels by 1800 pixels. And if we go to inches, 38 by 25 inches at a resolution of 72, right? And so this is big enough that you can print an enlargement and you can print a four by six and you can print a, a two by three if you wanna crop it down that small um, because that's how I have my camera set. Now you, you can check your camera settings to find out what is your, what is your camera set to to capture the photo and store the photo at I found with my camera this is the medium setting there's a smaller setting and those pictures when I print them they come out granular um, if I save them if I capture the images at a larger size than this then it takes up so much space on my SD card that I don't have a lot of room to um, uh, like if we go on a, a photo heavy weekend or something then I'm gonna fill up that SD card in a matter of two or three days and so it depends on what the image quality you want for print and how many photos you think you're gonna be taking as far as how you want to set your camera to capture so find that place on your camera where you tell it to save it as a large file or as medium files find that and find that sweet spot that works for you so that you have a good enough quality to edit and print and, but also it's not taking up so much space on your SD card because much larger than this is is going to take up space on your SD card and it's also going to take up space on your hard drive and it's going to take up space on your external drive when you go to save it and so there, there's a healthy balance um, this is my Canon 7D this is just the balance that works for me right now so if we're going to print this the, again, the 72 pixels per inch is kind of a small resolution and it's not the size that we need for a 4x6 print, right? So you can change it here. If you enter 6 inches here, it will change that for you and then you can type in a resolution of 300. And there it tells you your, your pixels now are 1800 by 1200 pixels. Um, there are some presets here that you can use um, if you want. Here's a 4x6 at 300 dpi, right? So we can click on that. Um, actually, that's 4x6 vertical, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll just keep it how we had it. And then let's click OK, and we'll see what that does. Boom. There's your printable image, right? And so now this print is ready to go. Um, this is just typically the sizes that I work with. 
Now, um, let's hit undo or step backward. And let's say you want to you want to print this at an enlarged size of let's say you want to make this a 12 by 12. Right. And so, of course, it, you're going to want to crop it because it's not square. So I'm going to choose the crop tool and go back up here to tell it 12 inches by 12 inches. And let's say we want, if we're going to use the rule of thirds, then we can put our, our little bottle of shells here. We can put that there where along this axis here. And I, we don't want to really cut off the elbow right there. So we're going to fudge that just a little bit. This is going to be her hand and that bottle right here going to be our main focal points. So let's center that a little bit. And then this gives you great, if you're going to do a 12 by 12 image, this gives you a great space for embellishing and for journaling and yada, yada, yada. So 12 by 12, 300 pixels per inch. Click OK. And then that's our square image. Now, um, you can see that I sort of cut it off a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of that little tiny green bit there. Now sometimes if you, in the crop tool, I didn't go over this, in the crop tool if you want to straighten your image you can. Um, that button is right there and you can just play around with that. When you click that button then you can draw a line. Oop. I didn't keep it there did I? Let's see, straighten. You can just draw a line and then it will crop that for you. Um, I don't want to do that. So, there we go. And so there's our 12 by 12. It still has that green. Still has that green line on it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Once and for all, we're going to get rid of that green line. There. Okay. So now we have a nice 12 by 12 image that is ready to print. Or um, if you want to do add some digital elements or word art here, you can. Um, so some fun options there for you. Now, I'm going to give you just a little tiny introduction into working with templates because um, we've kind of gone on for a long time. Now I have a preset template that I use and um, give me a minute while I find this a print template for 4 by 2.75 and this is one of the things that we find ourselves doing a lot in Project Life is um, creating 3x4 photos to fit in our 3x4 pockets. And so how can we do that quickly? Um, and let's see, I don't think that this is actually the one that <laughs> I was looking for. Um, but this, this will work. Um, you can see in my layers panel that all of these shapes have a different layer. So you can see that I'm on that layer. Let's just see how big these are set up to be. This is a project I was working on. Um, a mini album, I think. And so, yeah, they're 4 by 2.73. Um, I tell you what. We're just going to create a new, because I want you to see, hit cancel. Um, I think that that template must have gotten changed somehow. I want you to be able to do two 3x4 photos with a white border on a 4x6 canvas. So I'm going to go in here. I clicked New Document, and it gives me the option to open a custom canvas that's 6 by 4 at 300 ppi. So let's create that. Okay, 
and I'm going to turn on my layers here and I want to add a new layer because I'm going to fill this one so that I have a white background. Okay, now click on layer two because we want to add on top of that. Um, first off, there's two things that I want to do. I want to add some guides here so that I know what I'm doing. Um, and to add a guide, you click on the ruler. You can see that there's two rulers here. If your rulers aren't showing, I think you can go to Window and um, maybe it's in no nope, my workspace view. It's in view. That turns off your rulers view rulers to see your rulers and so if you click on that and drag down then you will get a ruler or, or a guide that will tell you where you are on that canvas so um, if I want a half no, a quarter a quarter inch right then that gives sets me a quarter inch border and if I want a vertical one I just click on that ruler and that gives me a quarter inch. I need one over here. And I'm going to set this up and then I'm going to offer this as a free download for you so that you'll have your own quick template. I've had several people ask me how to do this. Um, so that way you can download it and use it for yourself and feel free to share it and whatever. So we want to set up several guides just so that we know where our margins are. Okay, and so that gives us a quarter inch margin on each side and then a quarter, we want a quarter inch margin on the bottom. And what you'll find a lot is that the, a lot of templates out there will let you print two, four by, two three by four photos on a four by six canvas but they only allow one border here. And so if you're gonna use that photo in two different pockets, you need two borders here. So that's why I've done that that way. So now our guides are set. We're gonna make sure again that we're clicked on this next layer, not on this layer, because we don't want to do, we don't want to mess up our base canvas. And we're gonna hit the rectangle. We're gonna click on the rectangle tool here. And when you press on that and hold, it brings up all kinds of options. We just want a plain rectangle. We're also going to want to add a color to this so that we know what we're doing. Um, it doesn't matter what color you pick. Um, I will do because I like turquoise. So I'm going to make turquoise the, the top color here, and that's what color it will draw. Maybe I should choose a different since the guides are... Turquoise, why don't we pick a, a happy pink. There we go, that's nice and bold. Okay, and then we're just going to draw a rectangle here inside our guides. And it, it will tell you, we just had a, a guide pop up that says you're in the center horizontally. We're not in the center vertically yet. And that just took away our horizontal guide there. Um, that tells us the image portion is 2.493 by 3.507, right? Um, so 2.5, you might want to make it a little less than 2.5 so you have room for your, um, you have room to trim if you need to trim it, right? Because most pocket, most 3 by 4 pockets are 2.5. 2.9 or something like that, or 2.8. Um, your mileage may vary, and now you know how you can move. You can move your guides if you need to. Um, so that gives us one, one rectangle. Now this is not our photo, but you're going to figure out here in a minute why we're putting these rectangles here. These are going to become our clipping masks. So we're going to duplicate this rectangle so that we have a second one and that gives us another layer and if we click on our move tool we can move the second one over here 
and we're going to line it up and it'll give us all our guides that we need so that we know that we're pretty pretty spot on there we go okay and then we can bring in our photos so I'm going to click I want the photo to come in onto this rectangle so that this is our clipping mask click on that layer and then let's go back here to one of our photos I'm gonna hit control A and control C on my keyboard so that I copy it to the clipboard and then I come back to my canvas and I hit control V hello photo now obviously it brought it in at a really big size right because this the image itself is 12 by 12 and but the canvas is 4 by 6 so the image is twice the size that it needs to be. Now, if you want to print out 12 by 12 images in 4 by 6 sections, this is a way you can do that. Um, you can print that out, and that will be the 4 by 6 top left corner of that image, or wherever it is on the thing. I don't know. Um, but that's not what we want to do. We want to bring it down, right? And we're going to just pull it in like this and this is a good place to click on this little link button it actually helps us maintain the aspect ratio and we want to bring it down and now it's a it's a square photo but we're going to make it back into a rectangle right are you confused yet um and so we don't want to make it smaller than three by four or four by four um that's there's four. Let's make it four and a half by four and a half. Okay, just for grins and giggles. Um, actually, we can just size it so that it's the size of that canvas, and that way we know that we're getting a pretty decent, pretty decent crop of that image. And then we hit OK, and you notice that the rectangle is still on its own layer and the photo is now on layer two now if you want to rename that so that you know this is the shell photo you can just click on that bar and rename it so that you know exactly what that layer is and what it means now as long as you're on that layer you can still manipulate and move that image you can rotate it or do whatever you need to do with it in order to make it print with the borders that we've set, we're going to link it to this rectangle via clipping mask. And so you've heard me talk about clipping masks before. And so what that will do is it will tell that photo to be the shape of that rectangle. And we're just going to go over here to layer and click create a clipping mask. Boom. Now we have our 3 by 4 photo on half of a 4 by 6 canvas with a nice crisp quarter inch border around on all four sides. We'll do that again just so you can see again how I did that. Let's go make sure that we're on the second rectangle, right? And go back. Let's go back to this photo or use this one. So hit control A and control C again so we copy it to the to the clipboard and then control V so that we copy it onto our canvas. Now notice how the canvas is four by six at a resolution of 300 PPI and the photo is four by six and a resolution of 300 PPI. That is why this photo came into this canvas at the same size, perfect. Um, we still do wanna tweak it just a little bit so we're just gonna use our move tool and bring in we have a little bit of play here let's maintain our aspect ratio and obviously this is not an ideal photo to convert from horizontal to vertical but it's what I have open and so this way you can see how that happens we're gonna click OK again and now notice that our photo is on layer 2 if you want to rename it you can say oh, it's Alan's photo, right? 
And then we're going to create our clipping mask. See, we want to link it to rectangle one, copy, and so go to layer, create a clipping mask, and there we go. We have a photo of the seashell bottles and we have a photo of Alan that are now three by four inches on a four by six canvas with four or, or with a quarter inch borders on all four sizes and now we if you're ready to print that click on your layers and flatten the image so that it's all one image now um, if you want to delete your your guides you can just push them off the edge <laughs> and they'll disappear I'm gonna keep them they will not print I'm going to keep them on this though because I'm going to save this for you and let you have this as a download so you can use it in your project life, in your project life layouts as well. And um, so look for that link on my blog and that photo is now ready to go and be printed. So hopefully that's been helpful to you. Um, I know it's been long. It's been a lot of information packed in there. Um, that's good though. Hopefully, if you have any questions at all, please leave me a comment, email me, message me, hook up with me on Instagram, um, leave a comment on my blog, leave a comment on my YouTube. I'm pretty, pretty good. I try to check those messages about once a day. Um, so I will try and get back with you and you will probably see me address your questions or your comments or your challenges or your requests on a future video as well unless you specifically tell me please don't use this as an example on your <laughs> videos um, but these were very good examples of um, working with image size and quality so I hope that has been helpful to you thank you to my viewers who have mentioned this Th these challenges and um, for providing the springboard for me to create this video. So I'll see you back here again soon. Thanks again for watching you guys. Bye-bye.